What's up fans man, this is Funky Mark doing great things show man. I'm here with the former Trinidad and Tobago all around and captain Marlon Richards man, the man from Linden in Guyana with a unique story man. So he moved from Guyana to Trinidad when he was 12 years old and the rest was history. So Marlon man, let, let's go, let's go back, way back man, to 2001. So when he moved to Trinidad, uh, were you, did you ever play any cricket, former cricket in Guyana? No, I just played backyard cricket with my father, so that was it. So I always into cricket. Oh, but you but just take up a bat and ball and just play in the yard? Yeah, I normally used to play downstairs. My father would always buy a ball and we could play together, you know, mm -hmm. bat and ball and so. But I was actually into athletics back home. Well, you never play any soccer, any kind of cricket? Soccer? Nah, no cricket, just just athletics, strictly athletics back home. Okay, so in Trinidad, did you play? primary school cricket, like under 15 or under 19 cricket in primary yeah, school? Yeah, I played secondary school cricket and that is when I entered the whole cricket system and when I went to Tunapuna school. So this happened that William Perkins father was actually my coach, alright, and in 2002, I moved 2001, 2002 was the cricket season and he told me to just come and see and then he saw my talent and then he took me from secondary school cricket to my first club, EYM in Samoa and that is where I started my cricket journey through the different age groups on a 15, on a 17, 19 and So on. did you play any village cricket in Trinidad? You know, you're from Tinapuna, we have some guys like they're from Arima, some guy by some Sandy Grande somewhere. Did you play for Tinapuna? Um play for Tinapuna say in, um, in the secondary school cricket league. Oh secondary, but you yeah. never played for the village team, like no, 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 they play fit match and all this nah, kind of stuff. I never played that. From from there, I went straight into the club system. In the club system. Yeah. And which club did you play for? My first club was EYM Maiko in Sawan. In Sawan. Okay. Yeah. Which division did that? Uh, um, was that in Trinidad? At that time, that they were in Super League. Was it Super League or Division Two? Division yeah, Two. Division two. All right. Good. Good. So, as a youngster, as a batsman, what was your high score? Oh, yeah, my, my batting didn't come on back then. Back then was just strictly bowling, so... Uh, my high school maybe was in the 30s back then. 30s. So yeah. what about bowling? How, 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 did, how good did you do in, in the bowling? What yeah, was your best bowling, figures bowling in the was, bowling Bowling thing? was good. I was always on top of my game bowling. I was getting two, three, four wickets. Uh, a lot of the games was three and four wickets going into the But what was your career best? You remember your career best as um, a youngster? At that age, Nah, at that age, I wasn't really taking check. I was just going to the love of the game. Well, guess what happened at, at that age, at my age at that time? I remember exactly. Seven for five with uh, Ian Allen bowling at the other end, three for eight. So it's one thing with me with cricket. Mm. Always remember the numbers. So which year did you play for Trinidad and Tobago on the 19 team? Um, 2007, that was in St. Kitts. That was the tournament before they picked the West Indies on the... 19 to go to the World Cup in 2008, mm -hmm. the same year where Virat Kohli and they debuted. So, the so how did you do as a, as a how, how was how you did as a cricketer, your performance? Uh, my performance was good up until I got a tie injury in the three-day tournament and I didn't really recover in time to play the 50 over tournament. The 50 over? Yeah, I only played one game in the 50 over tournament, so, but it wasn't really, I didn't really have such an impressive performance back then for them to really not being qualified for the under 19 camp phase. Okay. But, yeah. But how was the experience as a youngster? How was the experience all in all? What did you learn? I mean, what? I mean, you got to learn something to elevate yourself to the next level. So how, how was that experience? Um, the experience was good. I mean, I uh, was privileged to know that that was my one and only chance to play for Trinidad under 19 because the previous year before, they had other bowlers that I mean, had more experience at the under-19 level, so automatically they would have been selected for the 2006 year. Mm -hmm. So in 2007 year now, it was a fresh batch of players, mm -hmm. so I, I, I got the opportunity. Um, it, it was really an eye-opening experience to know that I was able to compare myself to other bowlers around the tournament. And at the stage of the three-day tournament, I was really ranking up there in terms of the bowlers and the bowling quality and so Just unfortunately, I couldn't have shown a skill with the white ball in the 50 over part of the tournament, which was what was needed to be selected for the under 19 tournament. Okay, so you elevated to Trinidad senior team. Which year did you make your, your debut for Trinidad in first class cricket? Uh, I debuted uh, 23rd of March 2013. 
All right, very good. Trina and Tobago versus CCI at the Queen's Park. Over. Okay, and how did you do? I mean, before that match, before the night before the match, were, were you nervous? Were you couldn't sleep? I mean, were you um, just, you know, <laughs> tell me, you got to be excited as a cricketer. Um, to Expand be honest, on that. that's an interesting story because I, I'll tell you what, right? There was a lead up to that tournament. So I played against Queen's Park team twice in the span of five days. So we had a semi-finals at the University of Trinidad and Tobago. Now when my club Mary Boys was playing Queen's Park and that was a big rivalry. So anywhere in the world, anytime Queen's Park players coming home, the Paul Allen Bravo and had to play Mary Boys, those guys would leave straight from the airport to come to the match. That is how big the rivalry was. And just at the game there I was warming up and Wayne Bravo, he saw me there and he was like where were you? I said, I'm here all the time. And he was like, but them selectors say that there are nobody here. So because at that same time, CISIS, the West Indies Cricket Board, was trying to play the four-day and the 50 in the same country. Okay. You know? So that is what they tried at the time. They're to minimize financial yeah, costs. So yeah. it so happened that that game now, they say, the, not they say, well, what actually happened is that um, a bowl down Pollard with a Yorker. And because of that, that is what got the attention of the players. Yeah. And that was the Thursday. Mm -hmm. The weekend now, played against Queen's Park in the two-day game. And I made, I scored 98 in that game. And I got three wickets in the first and two wickets in the second end. So again, the performances against a big club at the time. And at, it, at that stage, first class was played on a Friday, right? and I was actually working. So I was working and my phone was ringing and I was in front of my boss. I was kind of squeezing and the you phone. couldn't take the phone. I couldn't take the phone call yeah. and say, right? So a China thing. So anyway, that come and finish and it was lunchtime and I forgot about that call. So I just sat down there and I'm watching. I had the calendar in front, in front of me because before that, I was following the tournament, right? I've been to be at the first class level through six years, so, and I had written down on the calendar a time when I wanted to play for Trinidad and Tobago. But at that day now, that Thursday before, to me it seemed that it was impossible to achieve it, right? Then the phone rang. I saw the number, I couldn't believe who was calling me. Pick up the phone, the person asked, you know who's this? I say, yeah, all right. This is Bravo Trinidad the captain. I just called to let you know that um, you are selected to play for Trinidad and Tobago. The manager and the coach are going to call you. Congratulations and hope to see you. This was Thursday after lunch. Trinidad and Tobago is playing CCC the following day, 10 a.m. in the Queen's Park Oval. So when I got that call, I just had to rush home. I let my supervisors know I rushed home. Pack my clothes, whatever I could remember that I need to pack because my mind was racing. Check in at um, Cascadia Hotel and 10 o'clock Friday morning when the umpire said play, Ravi Rampol is bowling on the top end and I bowling on the bottom end. So, so when, when the skipper give you the ball, um, telling you opening the bowling from the mm -hmm. um, opposite end, um, were you nervous? Were you trembling? I mean, were you, um, were you on a high? I mean, I always, I always nervous. No matter, I always, no matter what level I'm playing, my first ball, I'm always nervous. I'm feeling the butterflies. Mm -hmm. But because of the team that Trinidad and Tobago was then, anybody who steps in the dressing room will felt so comfortable. So if, when I went down that morning to breakfast, it was like I was playing for Trinidad and Tobago three years already. The warm, the welcoming. You know, you, you felt part of the team. So when I went on the field, it wasn't that n big nervous moment. I mean, it was nervous that I was bowling my first delivery, but I felt comfortable very quickly. Very soon I was able to get into So reality. your first bowling for Trinidad, did you get any wickets? Yes, I got three wickets. Three for 34 in the first innings. And the first time you batted for Trinidad, how much, what, what, what was the score? Um, the first time I batted for Trinidad and Tobago, uh, oof, yeah, I had to go back in memory books. Yeah, but, I, but that's, I didn't score but, but that's that fine, much. but 
Um, were you nervous when you took in the guard? Were you trembling? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, was, was a bit nervous, but not did too play nervous. And miss? Like, did he play and miss? No, did I didn't play and miss because okay. we were we played against CC where we're in a good strong position to so we uh, not a case where I went in with a needed me to score and okay, so I was okay. able to play and so yes I was nervous got off the mark and so but it, it wasn't really a big nervous performance. Okay, good, good. Well, well, let me tell you what, man. Um, when I met you this year. I always say God walking mysteriously because most of the fans who know me from Facebook for a long time, I'm talking about 2009, Beefs, you know that. Uh, I used to always talk about you on um, Facebook. How I thought you were just you're good enough to play for the West Indies. I mean, back in the day, you used to bowl some wicked outswing. You understand? Trouble, top level batsman. But uh, all in all, uh, I mean, I know you represent the country. I just thought that you got a bad deal from Trinidad. And that was one of the things that as I say, sometimes they say, a lot of times they go around and say, West Indies don't have good cricketers, they don't have good bowlers. But I always tell people, that's not the case. I, I was very disappointed when you exit the first class scene because as I say, um, I always follow you. Um, and I'm not telling you just because I'm in front of you right now. Uh, I know a cricketer when I see one. And um, it doesn't matter if I like yes or no. The, the main thing you have to look at, the stats. It doesn't matter what, what they say in cricket, whether they like you or they dislike you. Cricket is bought, is runs and wicket, and the stats speak for itself. So how 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 did you feel before you? I mean, I think that was one part disappointment part of your career. Could you explain that? I just want to know that before I end the interview. Um, it, it it was tough. It was tough to know that um, you still have it in you, but for whatever reason, the, the opportunity isn't coming, and then you're getting to see other players who get in the opportunity, and it it's it's They're not up to par. Yeah, it starts to place on your mind and you start to question exactly, you know, what to do, if, if to really continue and so forth. But, but at the end of the day, I always look at it this way. I was always grateful for the opportunity, for those who have given me the opportunity because I know my ability and I know what I can still do. And I'm very grateful to be in a position now where I can come out into the United States and actually showcase my ability and my talent and what I can offer. So at the end of the day, it, I see it as it was a part in my life, in my journey, and I'm grateful for it, and I'm just enjoying the cricket right now. Okay, so um, where do you see yourself in five years um, down the line in cricket? I mean, coaching, um, commentating, I mean, could you expand on that? Um, I, coaching seems to be the direction because I did some coaching last year. And I was very much surprised in terms of the joy I got out of it and being able to actually trans, be able to pass on the coaching and being able to, you know, to translate the players so that they could understand the game because that is the integral part of coaching, to be able to actually help players to understand at their different levels because not all players might be able to grasp the concept. So for a coach to be able to break it down so that they will be understand and they could execute is really really a heartwarming thing and i was i enjoyed it a lot so most likely that is the direction i would navigate to so if you if you don't at the park and a, a youngster come up to you and ask for advice um about the game and life and stuff mm -hmm. what what would you tell them how would you tell them you like that you just want to know um because they look up to you, they know you play for Trinidad, you're a role model for them. And they, 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 they come up to you and say, um, Mr. Richards, um, could you help me? Uh, could you give me some advice? How should I take my game to the next level and what? How, how would you respond to them? Um, I would always tell them that, you see, based on what they ask the question, like if it's a batsman or bowler, I would actually advise them in terms of that. But in a general sense, what I would say, cricket is a game of discipline, right? What I was told before, the way you treat cricket, cricket is going to treat you the same way, right, it's to reciprocate. So you have to be disciplined. Also, cricket, a cricket game is like a game of life, of everybody's life. They have the highs, they have the lows, they have the moments of joys, they have the moments of sorrow, they might have bad decisions. Those things go according to you and, and that happens in everybody's life. But at the end of the day is how you actually deal with it, how you actually overcome it. And that is where you have to look at your game. You might be going through a slump, you might be going through a bad patch, but you have to be able to work and figure out what is it that you may have to do to get out of the bad patch. Analyze the game, figure out, ask questions to see where are the mistakes and where you can go wrong. 
right? You can always improve again, no matter what, no matter what level, no matter what age. You can always improve again. So Marlon, um, thanks for talking to me. Thanks for um, enlightening the funky Mark doing great things show fans. I mean, all the best in your adventures for the future and all the best in the USA cricket. Hope you um, continue to um, climb those ladder and break down the barriers, all right? Take care, God bless, and bye for now.